Hi, I'm Tommy. To hear my story read to you, just click on this book. If you want to explore the story, click on my drawing. Want to try an art activity? Just click on the paintbrushes. To choose your starting place in the story, click on the book. To find out more, click on the cat. When you're ready to quit, click on the door. To hear these instructions again, just click on me. Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Little Bumble Bear's Let's Play. I'm Chris and Little Bumble Bear, and I'm bringing to you a wonderful little game from the 90s based off the book written by Tommy DePaula called The Art Lesson. Maybe you remember this game. Did you know they made a computer game? Well, I'm about to show you it here on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below sharing your thoughts if you remember playing this or if you had the book as a kid. And subscribe for more nostalgic gaming. I will have playlists down below in the description box of other storybook games I've done on the channel. If you enjoy those, you'll find more of them and more to come. I do stream on Twitch currently. If you want to follow my channel, feel free to uh, go check it out. Twitch.tv slash Little Bumble Bear. Catch me live. Say hi. I'm a family-friendly streamer. I also have a Twitter and Instagram. You're welcome to follow. And if you use Discord, I have a server for all of you guys. Just let me know in the comments. I'll get you an invite link. Please enjoy the art lesson. Tommy knew he wanted to be an artist when he grew up. He drew pictures everywhere he went. It was his favorite thing to do. Guess what I'm drawing this time? I wonder who will buy my pictures. Guess what I'm drawing this time? <laughs> I wish I had a cat like you. <laughs> I wish I had a cat like you. I'd like to write a story about this juggler someday. Drawing with chalk on the sidewalk is fun. You can learn how to use this tool if you click on the cat. Click on any tool and I'll tell you what it does. When you're ready to draw with the art tools, click on the sidewalk. To choose your chalk color, click on a piece of chalk. Use the sponge to erase. If you want some fun art ideas, click on the light bulb. To start over, just click on this paper. Click the milk to undo the last thing you did. To choose your chalk color, now you're ready to draw. Click on the picture that you'd like to finish. Can you finish our picture?
Come back again. His friends had favorite things to do, too. Jack collected all kinds of turtles. Herbie made huge cities in his sandbox. Jeannie, Tommy's best friend, could do cartwheels and stand on her head. This is a Pseudomus rubaventris turtle. A snapping turtle's jaw is strong enough to bite your finger off. My painted turtle has beautiful markings on its underside. My dad built a pen for my turtles. This is a Pseudomus rubaventris turtle. I finally built an arch that stayed up. I'd like to put flags on the turret. Sometimes, it's fun to make stuff besides castles. Next, I'll add a moat to this one. I finally built an arch that stayed up. <laughs> But Tommy drew, and drew, and drew. Here's one for Dad to take to the barber shop. Jack sure loves his turtles. Achoo! Herbie would be a good engineer. Jack sure loves his turtles. <laughs> Drawing with crayons is lots of fun. You can learn how to use this tool if you click on the cat. Click on the picture that you'd like to finish.
Come back again. Jeannie's great. I can tell her anything. Jeannie's great. I can tell her anything. <laughs> Jeannie's not supposed to read comic books, but I share mine with her. Bye-bye. That's my little sister, Maureen. Dad will like this picture of our car. Dad will like this picture of our car. His twin cousins, who were already grown up, were in art school learning to be real artists. They told him not to copy and to practice, practice, practice. So he did. Different artists have different styles. Some artists would paint the flowers like this. Different artists have different styles. Here's another way you could paint the flowers. Different artists have different styles. Here's another way you could paint the flowers. Someday, I'm going to be a real artist, just like Franny and Fuffy. I want to paint the tulips, too, but Grandma says I have to just watch. It's fun to paint, just like my twin cousins do. You can learn how to use this tool if you click on the cat. Symmetrical things, that means that both sides look alike, are fun to draw. Click on the picture that you'd like to finish. Help me finish this cat. Can you finish this flower?
Can you finish Nana's vase? I drew half of this butterfly. Now it's your turn. Come back again. Tommy put his pictures up on the walls of his half of the bedroom. I'm running out of room on this wall. Here's my art gallery. Here's my art gallery. Here's my art gallery. Mom doesn't know you're here. Shh. Mom doesn't know you're here. <coughs> These are my cousins. They're real artists. <coughs> Leave my stuff alone. Leave my stuff alone. His mom put them up all around the house. Aren't these pretty? Maureen, look at the dancer Tommy drew for you. Won't Tommy be surprised to see his pictures? Maureen, look at the dancer Tommy drew for you. <laughs> Isn't Tommy's flower pretty? Isn't Tommy's flower pretty? Let's hang these pictures before Tommy gets home. Let's hang these pictures before Tommy gets home. Tommy and his cats. How did that cat get in here? How did that cat get in here? 
did that cat get in here? His dad took them to the barber shop where he worked. My son Tommy drew those pictures. Quite an artist, isn't he? How about a shave today? How about a shave today? How about a shave today? <laughs> Joe DiMaggio is having quite a season. Maybe he'll even get the Yankees into the World Series. The mayor's race is really heating up. A race like that should get the voters out. Joe DiMaggio is having quite a season. Maybe he'll even get the Yankees into the World Series. The mayor's race is really heating up. A race like that should get the voters out. My boy draws all the time. That's our car. Hey! That's a picture of Castle Craig. That's Uncle Frank's boat. Will it be Witch Hazel or Bay Rum today? Will it be Witch Hazel or Bay Rum today? Tom and Nana, Tommy's Irish grandfather and grandmother, had his pictures in their grocery store. Tommy's pictures sure brighten up the place, don't they? Slow day at the meat counter. Slow day at the meat counter. Tommy's picture looks exactly like the Ford truck we use to make deliveries. Tommy drew one of my favorite plants. Tommy stacked these cans very nicely. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting low on dried beans. We're getting low on dried beans. It's fun to make a potato face. You can learn how to use this tool if you click on the cat. Come back again. Ooh, Tommy's favorites. Ginger snaps and frosted molasses cookies. Tom Downey, you're as bad as the children. <laughs> Nanafall River, his Italian grandmother, 
put one in a special frame on the table next to the photograph of Aunt Chloe in her wedding dress. Tommy's picture belongs in a place of honor. Oh, my little Tommy is going to be a great artist someday. Tommy's picture belongs in a place of honor. Ah! My youngest Chloe. Now that was a wedding. Once, Tommy took a flashlight and a pencil under the cover and drew pictures on his sheets. But when his mom changed the sheets on Monday and found them, she said, No more drawing on the sheets, Tommy. It's fun to draw with pencils, just like I did on my sheets. You can learn how to use this tool if you click on the cat. What would you draw on your designer sheets? Click on the picture that you'd like to finish. I'm drawing these sheets for my mom. See you again. I'm sorry, Mom. I won't do it again. I didn't know she washed sheets every week. I like your pictures, just not on the sheets. I like your pictures, just not on the sheets. His mom and dad were having a new house built. So Tommy drew pictures of what it would look like when it was finished. Our new house has two stories. Our new house has two stories. I hope we have a barbecue tonight. Someday, I'll have my own room. I think the daisies are the best. I hope Mom likes this picture of her garden. 
When the walls were up, one of the carpenters gave Tommy a piece of bright blue chalk. Tommy took the chalk and drew beautiful pictures all over the unfinished walls. But when the painters came, his dad said, That's it, Tommy. No more drawing on the walls. Look at my picture of Joe. <laughs> I drew a place on the wall for everyone in our family. Walls are fun to draw on. They're so big. The painters will be here tomorrow. The painters will be here tomorrow. That's my picture of Maureen. That's my picture of Maureen. Dad, can we have a cat? No. Dad, can we have a cat? No. Tommy couldn't wait to go to kindergarten. His brother, Joe, told him there was a real art teacher who came to the school to give art lessons. When do we have our art lessons? Tommy asked the kindergarten teacher. Oh, you won't have your art lessons until next year, said Miss Bird. But we are going to paint pictures tomorrow. Maybe you can help me mix paints tomorrow. Maybe you can help me mix paints tomorrow. I'm going to paint a picture of my new house. I'm going to paint a picture of my new house. Hey, cut it out! Hey, cut it out! It wasn't much fun. The paint was awful and the paper got all wrinkly. Miss Bird made the paint by pouring different colored powders into different jars and mixing them with water. The paint didn't stick to the paper very well, and it cracked. B is for ball. B is for ball. C is for cat. D is for door. E is for egg. F is for fish, G is for giraffe, H is for house, I is for ink, J is for jug, K is for kite. Aren't these beautiful colors? Look, she makes red and blue and got purple paint. Can I help, please, Miss Bird? Can I help, please, Miss Bird? Who put the blue brush in the red paint? Next time, can I paint my picture first? Mixing paints to get new colors is fun. You can learn how to use this tool if you click on the cat.
Choose a picture that you want to paint. I know my mother will like this picture. Come back again. If it was windy when Tommy carried his picture home, the paint blew right off the paper. At least you get more than one piece of paper in kindergarten, his brother Joe said. When the art teacher comes, you only get one piece. It's fun to make a leaf collage. You can learn how to use this tool if you click on the cat.
Come back again. I hate that paint. The wind's blowing the leaves off my painting, too. Tommy knew that the art teacher came to the school every other Wednesday. He could tell she was an artist because she wore a blue smock over her dress and she always carried a big box of thick colored chalks. She's beautiful. I wonder what's in her bag. Once, Tommy and Jeannie looked at the drawings that were hung up in the hallway. They were done by the first graders. Your pictures are much better, Jeannie told Tommy. Next year, when we have real art lessons, you'll be the best one. Let's make a jack-o'-lantern. You can learn how to use this tool if you click on the cat. Come back again. I'm your best friend. I know you're the best artist in our class. Looks like they copied. That one's really crooked. My pumpkin won't look like these. Those pumpkins all look the same. My pumpkin won't look like these. Tommy could hardly wait. He practiced all summer. Then on his birthday, which was right after school began, his mom and dad gave him a box of 64 Crayola crayons. Regular boxes of crayons had red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. 
This box had so many other colors. Blue violet, turquoise, red orange, pink, and even gold, silver, and copper. Wow! Can I try them right now? Hey! Look at me! What a great present! Thanks, Mom and Dad! Drawing with crayons is lots of fun. You can learn how to use this tool if you click on the cat. Here are some things you can make for a birthday party. Click on the picture that you'd like to finish. What do you think is in this box? Hey, help me finish this cake.
See you again. Class? Said Miss Landers, the first grade teacher. Next month, the art teacher will come to our room. So on Monday, instead of singing, we will practice using our crayons. Class, time for arithmetic. Class, now we have important things to do. Get out your flashcards. Drawing with chalk is fun. You can learn how to use this tool if you click on the cat. Here are some ideas you can try. Click on the picture that you'd like to finish. I hope Miss Landers doesn't see our drawings. Come back again. On Monday, Tommy brought his 64 crayons to school. Miss Landers was not pleased. Everyone must use the same crayons, she said. 
school crayons. School crayons had only the same old eight colors. As Miss Landers passed them out to the class, she said, These crayons are school property. So do not break them. Peel off the paper or wear down the points. Rules are rules, Tommy. Miss Landers makes them for our own good. I'm going to draw a picture for Miss Landers. I'm going to draw a picture of my Galapagos turtle. Poor Tommy. I'm going to draw my favorite comic book characters. Poor Tommy. It's fun to make a drawing with crayon and then paint over it with black paint. You can learn how to use this tool if you click on the cat. Click on any tool and I'll tell you what it does. When you're ready to draw with the art tools, click on the big paper in the middle. To paint over your drawing, click the black paint. Now you're ready to color. Click on the picture that you'd like to finish. Draw something you see in the night sky.
come back again. I thought art was supposed to be fun. How am I supposed to practice being an artist with school crayons? Tommy asked Jack and Herbie. That's enough, Tommy, Miss Lander said. And I want you to take those birthday crayons home with you. And leave them there. And Joe was right. They only got one piece of paper. Suppose you can't draw much with just eight colors. Well, I can still draw, but I can't do the things real artists do. Mr. Thomas A. De Paula, do I have to take those crayons away? Oh no, I'm in trouble. I hope she doesn't take my crayons away. Poor Tommy. One piece of paper? But what if I have more than one idea? What am I going to do now? Finally, the day of the art lesson came. Tommy could hardly sleep that night. The next morning, he hid the box of 64 crayons under his sweater and went off to school. He was ready. I wonder what the art teacher will have us draw. Tommy has something hidden under his sweater. Yeah, what do you suppose it is? Tommy has something hidden under his sweater. Yeah, what do you suppose it is? The classroom door opened, and in walked the art teacher. Miss Lander said, Class, this is Mrs. Bowers, the art teacher. Patty, who is our paper monitor this week, will give out one piece of paper to each of you. And remember, don't ruin it, because it is the only piece you'll get. Now, pay attention to Mrs. Bowers. I thought this day would never come. She's pretty. What do you want to draw? Guess. I'd like... You heard, Miss Landers. One piece. I'd like... You heard, Miss Landers. One piece. What do you want to draw? Guess. Class, I expect good listeners. Good morning, class. Oh. Good morning, class. Oh. Class? Mrs. Bowers began. Because Thanksgiving is not too far away, we will learn to draw a pilgrim man, a pilgrim woman, and a turkey. Watch carefully and copy me.
Let's wait for everyone to catch up. Class, your pilgrim pictures look very nice. Drawing with crayons is lots of fun. You can learn how to use this tool if you click on the cat. You can learn how to draw these animals. Click on the animal that you'd like to draw. Here's how you draw a rabbit. It's easy to draw a turtle. Can you draw this bird? Can you draw this bird?
let's learn how to draw a cat. See ya! Copy? Copy? Tommy knew that real artists didn't copy. This was terrible. This was supposed to be a real art lesson. He folded his arms and just sat there. Now what's the matter? Miss Landers asked. Tommy looked past her and spoke right to Mrs. Bowers. I'm going to be an artist when I grow up. And my cousins told me that real artists don't copy. And besides, Miss Landers won't let me use my own 64 Crayola crayons. Tommy, what's wrong? You seem so upset. Tommy, what's wrong? You seem so upset. Mrs. Bowers, I just want to learn to be a real artist. Mrs. Bowers, I just want to learn to be a real artist. Tommy, you're disrupting the whole class. Why are you the only one? I just don't understand you. Mrs. Bowers, I just want to learn to be a real artist. Well, well, Mrs. Bowers said. What are we going to do? She turned to Miss Landers, and they whispered together. Miss Landers nodded. Now, Tommy, Mrs. Bauer said, it wouldn't be fair to let you do something different from the rest of the class. None of the other children have 64 crayons. I understand, Miss Landers, but if he really wants to be an artist, I want to encourage him. You'll get to be a real artist someday. She's an art teacher, and she should understand. But I have an idea. If you draw the pilgrim man, and woman, and the turkey, and if there's any time left, I'll give you another piece of paper, and you can do your own picture with your own crayons. Can you do that? I'll try, Tommy said with a big smile.
Did you bake the bread? Did you remember the cranberries? Did you remember the cranberries? Did you bake the bread? Yes! And he did. Whoa! Beautiful! Can he draw? What did I tell you? I knew you were the best artist in the class. Thanks. I guess spending all that time drawing paid off. What did I tell you? I knew you were the best artist in the class. Thanks. I guess spending all that time drawing paid off. I'm kind of proud of this. I like the way I drew the pilgrim's faces. Can you draw? Here's my picture. Hey, that's pretty good. Can you draw? And he did. I finished the picture of the pilgrim man, woman, and the turkey, and I had time to draw some more. I drew Mrs. Bower's special earrings. Mrs. Bowers is my favorite teacher. And he still does. <laughs> now let's learn a little bit about Tommy, the author of this book. We'll start with Tommy's childhood. The questions we can ask him is, is the art lesson a true story? The art lesson is indeed a true story about me and some problems I had when I went to school because um, I, I, I thought everyone knew what they wanted to be when they grew up with, when they went to kindergarten. In fact, I tell people I thought you had to have had made a career choice before they'd let you into kindergarten. And um, I knew I was going to be an artist when I grew up, before I even went to school. And um, the art lesson, the only thing different about the book and what really happened in my life was that it actually took place in second grade. And in the book, we have it take place in first grade. Because first grade was fine. We didn't have the, uh, any art teacher come to the room in first grade. The art teacher came. Uh, in second grade. So it is about second grade, but I didn't use the real name of my real teachers. Did you always know you wanted to be an artist? Well, I don't know wh whether it was when I was three years old, but certainly by the time I was four years old, I really did know that I was going to be an artist when I grew up. I really knew that, and um, I told everybody. I told my, my parents, of course, and my grandparents, and my uncle, and um, my uncles and aunts that were, lived in Fall River, and, uh, and I told all the neighbors, and I used to draw on the sidewalk, and I used to uh, uh, make pictures and put them out for sale out for the house. <laughs> this all happened before I went to school. And so when I got to school, of course, I told all my teachers, 
I, I, even though I was only in kindergarten, I went around and told all the teachers that when I grew up, I was going to be an artist. Tell me about your best friend, Jeannie. Now, one thing that Jeannie was not allowed to read comic books in her house. Her, both her mother and father were teachers, so Jeannie was not allowed to read comic books. And my uncle, my mother's brother, had a store and a smoke shop, it was called, and they sold comic books. So every Saturday, my brother and I were allowed to pick out five or even ten, ten new comic books every Saturday. And Jeannie would come over to my house, and she'd, ju she'd just walk in, and we'd be sitting eating dinner or eating supper, and we'd hear giggles coming from the living room. There'd be Jeannie sitting there reading comic books because she couldn't read them at home. What do you remember about your first day of kindergarten? Yes, I remember the first time I went to kindergarten because um, all these kids were going to kindergarten. They were all crying, and I knew where the school was, and I made my mother leave me at the corner, and I walked to school myself. And when I, up, I went up the big front stairs, I didn't know that you weren't supposed to go in the front door of the school. You were supposed to go around <laughs> to the playground to the student entrance or the pupil entrance. And um, I walked right in the front door, and there was a lady standing there in purple. I found out later she was the principal. And she said to me, who, who, who are you, little boy? And I said, I'm Tommy DePaul. Where's the kindergarten room? And she said, well, I'm Miss Burke, the principal, and it's right there. And I went into the room, and there were all these kids crying, and I had my papers. You had to have all these papers. I guess you had to show that you were vaccinated for smallpox and all this health stuff, you, had, you know, what diseases you might have had, et cetera. And um, I handed the papers to the teacher, and I said to her, when do we learn how to read? And she said, oh, we don't learn how to read this year in kindergarten. We learn how to read next year in first grade. So I said, fine, I'll be back next year. And I <laughs> went right out of the school and walked all the way home. Did you really draw on your bed sheets? But my grandfather had also given me this pencil called a Listo pencil. And he could mark on the meat packages um, the price, et cetera. And it said, a Listo pencil will draw on anything. And it was a very black uh, pencil. And um, when I went under the sheets and turned my flashlight on, I saw all this white space. So I immediately put the book back up there, grabbed the pencil, went back underneath the covers, and began to draw on the sheets. And I did. My mother found them on Monday morning when she changed the I didn't know she changed the beds. I thought we just had the same sheets all the time. So for a whole week, I was drawing on these sheets. And when I came home from school, she, was, she met me holding them. You know, and uh, she said, what if they don't come out off? And I, said, well, I thought, well, why would she want to wash them anyway? because I thought they were wonderful, but she did. She and I didn't get punished. I had to promise I would never draw on the sheets again. And actually, I never did draw on the sheets again. Tell me about school crayons. The thing about school crayons is they only came in the old eight colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. You used to have to say that very fast. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. And um, they were thick, and they had so much wax in them that very little color came off. And the paper that we got was made out of wood pulp. And Patty Clark, the, the paper monitor, she was always the paper monitor. I don't know why, but Patty Clark was always the paper monitor. She always would give me the piece of paper that had a big chunk of wood in it. Um, I, maybe she was jealous that I was a better artist than she was. But so I'd have to use that, you know, that piece of wood to, as part of my picture. Um, but school crayons were terrible, were terrible. Of course, my second grade teacher, Miss, I call her Miss Landers in the book, she really did say, uh, these are school crayons and these are school property. Do not break them, peel off the paper, or wear down the points, which meant don't use them sit there and look at them and make sure they're in order. She used to make sure they were in order in the box. 
Now let's look at Tommy the illustrator. These are the questions we can ask him. How would you describe your illustration style? When I'm doing books, I really do feel that I have a responsibility to the young viewer to let them read the map um, of the art very quickly and clearly. So my work is very uncluttered. Um, I like to use a heavy line, even if I'm doing, um, I work in two more, really two sort of styles. One is a, a watercolor type style, the other is a more painterly style um, using acrylics. But I still use a line and my line drawings are very important to the foundation of my work. did you use to illustrate the art lesson? With the art lesson, I used a, the transparent or my watercolor acrylic mode. Um, what I did was I, I um, well, there's a whole technique that I use of drawing the pictures directly on the watercolor paper, doing the line drawing first, and then actually coloring in. I, I like to call it my coloring book, you know, style. Uh, because actually that's what it's like for me. I do line drawings and then I color them in. Um, and that was used, I used liquid acrylics for that. So it was a transparent medium as opposed to an um, uh, uh, opaque medium. And the, the problem with that is if I, if I make a mistake with an opaque medium, I can go right in and repaint over it because it's, it's actual paint. It's, I can cover up the mistakes. But if I made a mistake in a drawing of the art lesson, for instance, I would have to have ripped it up and start all over again. What advice did you receive when you began illustrating? She said, first of all, you don't have to describe anything. I have to describe things because I'm not an artist. But you don't have to. You just say, the little old man came into the room. You don't have to say, the little old man with the blue robe with the stars on it and the pointed hat and the long mustache and beard came into the room. You don't have to say that. Um, you could say he came into the room quietly or loudly, but you can show all that other stuff, all the descriptions. And that's when I realized, yes, that's right. So when I'm working on a manuscript, I. I've kind of learned, so I edit as I go along now, that um, I don't have to really describe things. I don't have to say what color everyone is wearing. I don't have to say in the art lesson that Tommy had brown hair and it stuck up all over his head. I do that. I draw, I draw that. Um, that he wore a striped you know, um, shirt. I don't have to say that. I just draw it. And that's why really, um, in a good picture book, um, the illustrations are really worth um, more than half the text. What advice do you have for me if I want to be an artist? Get your parents to buy you lots of supplies. Use more than just markers. Everyone uses markers these days. Use more than just markers. Learn about how to use all different kinds of, of other supplies like paint and, and pastels and um, tell your parents that when I was nine years old, I got all this wonderful art stuff for Christmas. Maybe they'll give you the same thing. And practice, and don't copy. How did you choose the colors for the art lesson? The colors that I chose for the art lesson, um, first of all, I knew that I was going to have to show the Crayola box. I got permission from the Crayola Crayon Company. So that was kind of a beginning. Um, I knew that I had dark brown hair, so that also was easy to do. And I knew what color hair my mother and father and my grandparents had. But I wanted the colors to look very fresh. And I wanted them to look as though they kind of popped up out of a box of crayons. Why do you think children like the art lesson? Oh, I think it's because they, they experience the same thing that Tommy experiences in the book. I think it really speaks to them. Even though it's a specific story about a specific little boy, and in the case of reality, it's me, and my specific incident in my specific life, it's, um, it's general enough that children have experienced it as well, which absolutely surprised me. I was really surprised that 
um, that book speaks to children uh, as, as um, deeply as it does because it is a personal story. But obviously, you know, they're experiencing some of those same things themselves in school, so they can relate to it. They relate to the character of Tommy, boys and girls alike. Now let's go to Tommy the writer. The questions we can ask him. Do you ever revise your stories? Now I know young people especially don't like to revise their, their stories but that they do for school. But I have to say that even after 32 years, my stories always get revised. Always. Um, my editor um, makes suggestions and corrections and some I, I can argue with her about some of them and um, but quite often I will take her advice and um, make some changes but I always do at least two or three drafts of a manuscript before it's you know seems right to be published. Of all your books do you have a favorite? No, I don't have a favorite of any of my books. Um, it's, it's, it's corny and it's a cliche because I've heard other authors and artists say this, but my books are really, really like my children. And um, they each have a uniqueness about them. And, you know, I suppose I could say my favorite character is Streganona because, you know, I've done so many books with Streganona, six books now with Streganona as a main character. Um, but I, uh, each, book is, each book is so different for me. It's a totally different experience in the writing of it and in the illustrating of it. And I, I kind of like that. Why do you like to write folk tales? One of the reasons I love folk tales is because no matter how many times you read them, there's always something new and something interesting to find in folk tales. Folk tales as opposed to fairy tales. Fairy tales always rely on magic. Folk tales don't necessarily, they can have magic in them, but folk tales can also have, like in my original folk tale of one of the Streganona stories, Big Anthony um, gets into trouble because he wants always to find a shortcut. He doesn't pay attention. And so, um, there's always like a little bit of a moral in a folktale. Or you can find out about the way people behave in folktales. Like in an Irish folktale that I retold called Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato. And how everybody in this funny little Irish village reacted to this giant potato that blocked the highway. So folktales, also the characters in folktales are usually humorous and I love to make people laugh. Where do ideas come from? The thing about ideas is not all ideas are great ideas, but if you keep on saying, oh, that's not a great idea, and you don't get ideas, you don't use that part of your brain, the idea part, then it's very hard to come up with ideas when you have to. So I've learned that I never say that an idea is a good idea or a bad idea. If it's an idea, I'll jot it down on a piece of paper, or I'll, um, you know, I'll usually jot it down because I can't always remember them and maybe someday it becomes a book. And then sometimes I'll stick the idea up on the wall uh, with a pin on my studio wall or put it in a drawer that I have a lot of ideas in, uh, little pieces of paper, little, you know, just ideas. They're, it's all they are is ideas. And who knows, someday that may turn into a book. Tell me more about your ideas. An idea is a very young idea. It takes a lot of nourishment and a lot of nurturing. It's like a seed, like a plant. You know, when a plant, I, I do a lot of gardening and, um, and I plant a lot of seeds for my spring flowers and my summer flowers. And when you plant that seed and you hope that it's going to germinate or start to grow, and when it starts to grow, it's very fragile, so you have to take very good care of it. And if you want, if you plant a seed and expect to have a rose bush the next morning, well, it's just not going to happen. You have to give it the right amount of sun and water and light. It's the same thing with ideas. You have to really nourish them and pay attention to them. And a lot of people just don't have the patience to do that. They want it too fast. And every idea has its own time frame as well. Some ideas develop quicker than others. How can I become a better writer? 
Now the other, uh, the other advice I'd give to a person who wants to be a writer is the only way to, it's the same way of being an artist, you have to practice. So the only way to write is to write. And to try to write stories that mean something to you. Um, they don't always have to be autobiographical, but they have to mean something to you personally. You can't write about something that you don't love. And you have to love what you're writing about. But then the important thing is, if you don't like to read, you'll never be a writer. Now let's look at Tommy's life today. What do you enjoy about your work? I think the, I think the thing that may be hard for young people to understand is the, um, that business of sort of literally making something out of nothing. Creating a story uh, and then creating the drawings on a white piece of paper. Now, with the art lesson, of course, it's a memory piece. It's a, it's a, it's a true story. So I didn't have to make up the story in a sense. But in, re in doing the drawings, I had to dig back into my memory and then you know, make pictures on white paper. And that's always very exciting for me. Then I think the, um, um, the other thing about doing books, which is different than doing paintings and drawings, which are not for books, which I also do, is that I know that the books are going to go out there to young people and of all ages. It doesn't matter if they're tall or short, but uh, just young people. And um, I can um, have like a conversation with them. I can tell them about me and about things that I care about and uh, things that I love, uh, things that have happened to me, things that I can make up, and I can share that with people. And that's very important. What's special about writing books for children? Some people say, oh, you do books for children. That must be easy. It's not easy. It's very, very hard work. And I take it very, very seriously. Um, because first of all, it's for, it's for young people. And I, have a, I feel I have a great responsibility to young people. Um, because I remember how important good books and good theater and good movies and good TV shows and things like that were for me when I was growing up, when I was young, and how important that all is. You've been described as always on the go. I have um, lots of energy. I have lots of energy. And um, I think that the energy I have is even added to because I'm really interested in waking up every morning. I'm interested in what the day is going to bring. and. Uh, um, I'm a very optimistic kind of person. Um, I'm not, I'm very realistic as well. And I was born with good genes, I guess. I, I have that Irish-Italian blood mixing up in my veins, you know, has a lot of passion and a lot of, you know, outbursts, a lot of drama and a lot of uh, energy. So yeah, I am always on the go, yeah. And I, I'm always looking for new things to do. I'm never satisfied. It's always. You know, someone said to me, what's your favorite book? I said, I haven't done it yet. And that's exactly the way I feel. What are your hobbies? One of the things I really enjoy, and when I think back to when I was a child, I enjoyed it even when I was a child, is cooking. I love to cook, and I love to bake bread. I'm always looking for that elusive, best loaf of bread. Um, and I like doing peasant bread, not, not loaves in a loaf pan, but free-form sort of Italian breads, rustic breads. Um, but I love to cook and I love to eat. It'd be probably better if I just loved to cook and didn't love to eat. Um, I love movies. I, I've always loved movies. I love theater. Uh, and I love to read. And of course, I'm really happiest when I'm at my studio and uh, drawing. I love to have friends. I love to entertain. I love to have friends over for dinner and I love to have parties. In fact, I had a birthday party when I turned 60 in 1994, and there were over 300 people here, almost 400, um, at my birthday party, and that was great. What is your favorite holiday? Christmas is my favorite holiday. Uh, my birthday is my second favorite holiday. Yeah, I love Christmas. I love Christmas. and. Um, I think that comes from my, my growing up. My parents loved Christmas. And Christmas was always a wonderful, wonderful time of the year for us.
uh, my sister who works for me now and is here um, living here in New Hampshire she uh, we, we were talking about Christmas and she also has wonderful memories of Christmas so I think it's really what your family does if I wrote you a letter would you answer well I get over a hundred thousand letters a year now so that's an awful lot of letters um, I, years ago, I used to answer all the letters myself. I can't do that anymore. It just takes too much time. So I have a printed response, and I try to put a little note on there if I can. But the printed response is a letter that I've thoughtfully written, and I do a new one every year or so. And it's got a photograph of me, a new, you know, recent photograph so the children can see what I look like. I don't look like those pictures in the back of the book anymore. You know. That was, they never update them uh, uh, enough. Um, and then it has all the books that I've done. And then the, we also put in a, a sheet that says some of the things I'm going to be doing, like if, where I'm going to be traveling to. Or, um, so um, I try to, and I try to answer the questions uh, in, in the letter that I have printed. Because um, most, the question I get asked most by young people is where do I get my ideas? And I tell them that ideas come from all kinds of places, even your own life. And the art lesson is a good example of that. Here at my drawing table, I have all my materials nearby so I don't have to go and get up and run across the room to get them. Over here on farthest away are pencils, three different colors. There's brown, black, and blue. And I use those when I'm doing my sketches on my paper. Next to those pencils are pens, just like this one here. And these are pens that I dip in a special brown ink that I've mixed up and is in this little jar. And it's a brown-black ink, and I mix it myself, and it's a secret formula. Then there's a big jar of uh, big brushes. So those, um, those I use to put down big areas of color. And look what's in the middle of that jar of big brushes. A turkey baster. What's that doing here? Well, this is a very important thing for me because this is how I take the water out of the jars if I need a lot of water, and put it in my little palette. And I also have little tiny eyedroppers that I do the same thing with. I can just squeeze some little tiny bit of water and put it in my little palette. There's all these wonderful dishes that have all the little separate compartments that I use to mix my paint in. And those are made out of china so that they wash very easily. And I have a whole stack of them because I don't want to stop and have to wash one so I can get about 10 of them dirty and wash them all at once. And then in back of me, I have all my paints, all my acrylic paints that I use. And I use two different kinds. Um, they're all, uh, three different kinds, actually. There's some in a bottle. There's some in big jars and some in smaller jars. Then right here, I have all my brushes. These are very important because I, and there are lots of them. Some people say, why do you have so many brushes? Well, I have so many brushes because when I use them on my watercolor paper, I wear them down, and uh, I have to keep on using new brushes when they get worn down. And this jar here is filled with all the worn down brushes, but I save them. I don't throw them away right away because they're like my friends, and I don't like to throw them away, so I save them. And sometimes I might use them for a background or something, but I save those used up brushes. The archives are where I keep a copy of every book of mine that's been published, even in foreign languages. So I have hardcover books, paperback books, and the books that have been published in foreign languages as well. I've written and illustrated 198 books up to date. And the books are not arranged alphabetically. I've arranged them chronologically, so I know what book was published before which book and which book was published after which book. And this one right here is my very first book that I illustrated. It was a book called Sound by Lisa Miller. And it's a picture book, science book. One of my best loved books is the book, The Art Lesson. If you were here, you would see that there's a whole lot of copies of The Art Lesson. There's a couple of paperbacks, but then there are all these copies in different languages. I've been told that this book is one of my favorite books uh, for children. And I think it's because 
It's about me when I was a little boy and the problems I had in school with the teacher because I knew I wanted to be an artist and I had to wait till the art teacher came and to give us an art lesson. Children have the same experiences today, I found out from letters. And I think that children like this book because they can relate to it personally. I know I'll be adding a lot more books to these bookshelves because I have a lot of ideas left and a lot more books to do. This is Streganona, the story about Grandma Witch and her helper, Big Anthony. This is Charlie Needs a Cloak, the story about poor Charlie the Shepherd and what he has to go through to get himself a nice new red cloak. This is Bill and Pete, the story of a young Nile crocodile and his toothbrush, Pete. This is Tony's Bread, an Italian tale about how panettone, an Italian Christmas bread, came to be. The first thing I have to do is get an idea. And I've got an idea. I'm going to draw a picture of me when I was a little boy. Next thing I do is I sketch it in pencil very lightly so I know where everything's going to go. Do that, do that kind of quickly and very loose because I'm going to erase the pencil as soon as I finish. Okay. And that gives me enough of a guideline to know where I should do my ink drawing. I'm going to take my special brown ink that I've mixed up and use my pen. And I'm going to ink this drawing in. Now that I finish my drawing, um, first thing I'll do is I'll erase all the pencil. And I can get my paints and start to paint it in. I'm going to start with the skin tones. And I've mixed up a special color that gives me the right color I want for my skin tones. I want to put a little shading in there. The art lesson is indeed a true story. It happened to me when I was in school. It all happened exactly the way I wrote it in the book about the 64 crayons and, and my friend Jeannie, who uh, was my best friend and knew I was a good artist. Now, I knew I was going to be an artist when I grew up from the time I was four years old. In fact, I thought everybody knew what they wanted to be when they grew up before you went to school. I thought you had to. I thought you had to know what you wanted to do with your life before they'd let you into kindergarten. And here's a picture of Tommy from the art lesson. I'm going to draw a cat for you, and I'm going to draw a cat one way. I draw cats lots of different ways, but this is just one way, and you can draw a cat any way you want, okay? All right, I'm going to start with the cat's ears, and I'm going to make little triangles like that. That's going to be the cat's ears. Then I'm going to connect those little triangles and make the inside of the cat's ears. Then I'm going to use the letter Y and make the cat's nose. And at the bottom of that Y, I'm going to put two little curved lines going in either direction for the cat's smiling mouth. Now, lots of times when I'm drawing people and animals, I just use a little dot for the eye. But it's very, very important where I put that dot. So I'm going to put one dot right here and one dot right there. And there I have my cat's eyes. Now I'm going to make a nice curving line right around for his face. And I'll give him some whiskers. 
Now I'm going to make my cat sitting down. So I'm going to take another line from this round curve line from a space and bring it sort of curved down around and straight. And then I'm going to make three little bumps for his toes and then another line up for his other leg and three more bumps for three more toes. Now I'm going to make a big curving line for his back. And when I get down as far as his feet, I'm going to curve that line around and bring it around again. And it's going to be our cat's nice big tail and another curved line and three more little toes. And there's our cat. I, I hope you enjoyed the art lesson. Click the page you'd like to see. It was a wonderful little story. I enjoyed it. And I tried to do some decent drawings with a computer mouse. I really just had fun. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and please subscribe for more nostalgic gaming. Thank you for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. Remember, as I wrote in one of the paintings, you are special and loved. You are never alone, and you are always welcome to come back and hang out anytime. Until my next video, God bless. I will see you all later. Bye-bye, my friends.